Well, I wish I could tell you everything about Maria and everything that she does, but number one, I would run out of, uh, I think I would lose my voice, I would run out of time, we wouldn't be able to do the interview and it'd be a mess. So let's just do it in a nutshell. She's host and executive producer of Latino USA that airs on NPR. She's been a correspondent for CNN and PBS. She has her own interview show, her talk show. She's a syndicated columnist. She's written two books. She created the Futura Media Group, a multimedia nonprofit production company. On her free time, like she has some, she's a Sor Juan Inez de la Cruz Chair of Latin American and Latino Studies at DePaul University in Chicago. And one more thing, her and her artist husband are raising two teenage kids. Anybody who's a parent knows that that's enough to drive you crazy. So, Maria, really, you have to give us your, your recipe. What is your formula? Well, now that we know what she does, we're gonna find out who she is. But first, let's look at this video of her latest and most important project. As a journalist, I've traveled to 49 states and around the world, listening to other people's stories. Have you or your family ever gone hungry? Yeah. Yes. And everywhere I go, I try to create safe spaces for real dialogue. Can you tell us why it is that in Niger, so many young girls are getting married so early in their lives? There's not a tradition. As a Mexican immigrant growing up on the south side of Chicago, my story was invisible in the mainstream media. That number, that combination. As a woman, an immigrant, and as a Latino, I understand these stories are all of our stories. Go to school on a boat. What did you think about that? No, got the I really thought it was wonderful. I like it when the boat comes. In 2010, I founded the Futuro Media Group with the mission to produce independent journalism that gives critical voice to the voiceless. First, we move production of Latino USA, the longest running national news and culture radio program about Latinos from the University of Texas at Austin, where it was launched, to our offices in Harlem, New York City. How do you describe merengue music to someone who's never heard it before? In 2013, Latino USA celebrated its 20th anniversary on air by expanding to an hour, and our numbers have been amazing. A 20% gain in station carriage, a huge daily increase in our social media presence. And we have digital listeners in over 50 countries now through our SoundCloud page. No one does what Latino USA does. This is the new America, black, brown, gay, Muslim. You We're know. also launching a new PBS series, America by the Numbers with Maria Hinojosa, the first primetime news program anchored and executive produced by a Latina journalist. Together, we'll look at what these numbers could mean in this election year if we stand up to be counted. America by the Numbers. We're living the largest demographic change in history. We ask Our new TV series looks at how the changing demographics and the new mainstream are reshaping the cultural and political landscape in America. Buying power that exceeds $2 trillion. Our pilot Today. about one of the most diverse towns in America, Clarkston, Georgia, aired as an election special on PBS and increased the ratings for the time slot by 33%. We work hard, we're buying for close homes. Hey, I'm probably a, a racist or a redneck or something, I don't know, but you wonder sometimes if I've got any buddies anymore, like, you know, that think the way I do. The Futuro Media Group does more than make media. We go deep into towns and cities to connect and foster real dialogue with the communities we report on. And we have an energetic staff that reflects the Futuro Media Group's core mission of fostering young and diverse talent. As we grow and expand, I hope you'll join our family on this exciting new journey into the Futuro. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage Maria Hinojosa, the 2014 Latino Vader. 
Maria, for inspiring Latinos to dream and achieve. You are more than deserving of this very special award. <laughs> Estoy orgullosa de ti. Ay, querida. What? It's heavy. <laughs> Okay, wait a second, I'm gonna do my, I'm gonna do my, I needed to do the biceps today, so, orale. It's heavy. <laughs> What's going on? Your fan club. <laughs> Ahora, lo que te quiero decir también, María Elena, es de que <clears throat> I don't think any of us <clears throat> walk around kind of saying, like, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be a leader today. You know, we don't. Something happens along, along the way. Something snaps in you that says, you know what? I need to do this, and, and, and I know that I'm going to make a difference in someone's life with what I do. What was it in, in, in your case that snapped, that made you do what you do? Um, all right, well, hmm, let's see, how much do I want to reveal? Because I can see that all of this is going to be on the, heavily on the record. Let's just say that I went to a very important um, news program out there in the world, and they were like, we love you, we think you're amazing, we should absolutely be hiring you for all kinds of reasons, but we've got all of these um, older men, so would you mind just waiting? <laughs> I was like, no, la verdad, really? That was the thing where I just said, you know what, no, I'm not going to wait, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. And it, there takes a little bit of locura. Thank you, Maria. There takes a little bit of locura um, in deciding to do something like launch your own company. But I'm telling you, if I didn't understand that, okay, so this notion that all of us live with, the invisibility, because I think when you talk about Latinos, there's this sense of like, ¿Dónde estamos? I don't think that's the same for you, Maria Elena. I think you, it's a whole other story. Um, you're not dealing with invisibility. For us, for many of us, there's a notion of invisibility. And so I want to change that. And that's kind of been my mission from the very beginning. Yeah, I was very lucky that I have Spanish language and I was decided to hire a Hispanic, so I guess you're right. <laughs> <laughs> In that sense, I guess you're right. Well, what is, what, so there's a challenge. Does that mean that you still, is that still happening nowadays? Do we still have that challenge as Latinos, not only to be hired in, in news organizations, but in, in other uh, companies around the country? Look, th wh what I call this is I call it the U.S. Mambo, that we're all living in the United States at this moment. Tres pasos para adelante, dos para atrás. So it's confusing. Because at the same time that you know, this can be exploding, that Hispanicized can be exploding, that there's all of this interest, the reality is that Latinos are also the most incarcerated people right now in the United States of America. That while we have Maria Elena Salinas, que es un honor estar aquí con ella. Gracias, Maria. La verdad, un honor. She was always, um, you know, I always dreamed of like, well, one day maybe I'll meet her, and now we're amigas. Oh, come on. It's true. Um, You're being too kind. Come on, it's, come it's on. Left, it's about you. It's true, it's true. It's about it's true. <laughs> but while we can have Maria Elena or Sofia Vergara, we also know that Latina teenagers have the highest rate of attempted suicide in our country. Yeah. So for Latinos, it's the U.S. Mambo in the United States of America in 2014. Yeah. Three steps forward, two steps back. Ahora, this is all part of what you've been a part of, which is changing the narrative and saying, okay, forget about that. We know all the bad statistics, but we're just jumping in and we're gonna, we're gonna create our own narrative. And all of you here at Hispanic Eyes are part of that, of saying, we're gonna create our own narrative. Y vámonos, y nos tiramos. There's a little bit of mumbling on this side. I would ask you please to keep it down because we have very valuable information from Maria Hinojosa who's being honored today. She has a lot of things to say that could actually help you and change and your plus, life. And plus, you all just got quieted by Maria Elena Salinas. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, my, Maria, I want to know a little bit about, <laughs> about your background because, you know, I, I have this, this uh, obsession with knowing about people, you know, because we always have labels, we carry these labels, and we know what we do and what your job is and what your title is and, and things like that, but rarely do we have an opportunity to know who you are as a person, who you are as a human being. So let's start from the beginning and tell us a little bit about your background. You were born in Mexico, and then what? So I was born in Mexico City, 
Um, my dad is a medical doctor. I was um, the last of four kids to be born, kind of as a sorpresa. And um, there was going to be a hospital where my father was going to dedicate his medical career to researching the inner ear. And um, the, the hospital was never built. Hubo cambio de sexenio, there was a change of government. And the University of Chicago offered him a job. So we end up moving to Chicago. My dad becomes a citizen overnight. We all have green cards. And I grew up as an immigrant kid on the south side of Chicago during the tumult of, you know, in the 1960s and 70s, um, when the United States of America was transforming itself. And, and Martin Luther King and Cesar Chavez were my heroes. And we watched television news all the time. But we never saw ourselves reflected on the news, you know, in la radio un poquito, not, not so much. But um, so that, that, that seed is born in me. Um, I'm also traveling between Mexico and the United States all the time. We drive down from Chicago to Mexico every year, all six of us in the station wagon. It was pretty fa fabulous. Um, and then I end up going to school in New York. And I think that's where something, I realized that I had a tremendous responsibility, that I had had a life of, um, no había mucho dinero porque mi papá es médico de investigación, but we were okay. But I realized I had a real responsibility to give back. And I think that's when I, my identity also became clearer of who I was, um, not just as a Mexicana from Chicago, but then as a Latin American young woman in the city of New York. All right. Maria, your brand of journalism could be described as advocacy journalism. I mean, I know that some people, you know, that's an issue. They, um, they, they think that you have to concentrate only on objectivity. They fight for objectivity. But, you know, there really is a need for advocacy journalism. Is it insulting to you when someone says that you are practicing advocacy journalism? You know what, Maria Elena, um, I know why you're a good interviewer, because this is the issue. And actually, I would like you all to be quiet, because this is really, really, really important. So we're just going to wait. The question that Maria Elena asked is about advocacy journalism. It goes to the core, Maria Elena, of because we identify with who we are as Latinos, or as women, or as immigrants, that we are somehow perceived as being less patriotic, less American, um, less trustworthy. And so um, I actually don't believe I practice advocacy journalism. Uh, while I completely applaud it, I don't think that that's what we do. We are simply telling stories that are invisible in the United States of America. And I think it says so much about our country that the fact that we just tell these stories is somehow seen as advocating. Guys, we're advocating for the United States of America here. <laughs> I mean, la verdad. Maria Elena. I, mean, I know how it is that you're giving a voice to, to the voiceless. And I know that I have also been accused of advocacy journalism. I see, and uh, Ruben Salazar once said, if giving a voice to Latinos is advocacy journalism, then let it be. I'm guilty. Uh, but you know, there, there are no, you do not see mainstream media giving a voice to some of these people, or, or when they do, it's usually in a very negative light. So, it, it, what you do in Futuro Group, in your in Latino USA, in your specials, in your columns, is actually telling stories that you're, no one's going to hear unless they hear them from you or from me or from some of our colleagues. And so that that's the whole dynamic of flipping the power narrative, right? We're all about changing the narrative. You know, la verdad, la verdad es que I would probably say I tend to be more of a sad Latina, an angry Latina, because la verdad is que, you know, I've been doing this like you, Maria Elena, we've been covering the same story for too long. Um, I have a staff that's like, no, we're not going to be sad Latinos. We're changing the narrative. And we're leading the way. And so I'm like, orale. And then I go out for my run in the morning. I'm like, yeah, vamos. <laughs> so that, that notion of flipping the narrative is what, all of, what we're all trying to do here. Um, we're talking about doing it in media. But all of us have to do that. At the same time, Maria Elena, sin, sin olvidarnos de que la realidad de ser Latino en los Estados Unidos en el 2014, óyeme, listen to this, you guys. I know that it's like Latinos and immigrants right now, it's as if we are the guinea pigs 
of pushing the envelope for basic due process in the United States of America? What does it mean that we have 15-year-old undocumented immigrants, children coming to look for their parents who cannot afford a lawyer and so they're giving a law class in an hour and expected to defend themselves in front of the government of the United States of America? What does that say not just about Latinos, but it says about our country? Right. So we have to be vigilant about that. And we have come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. I'm sure that 10 years ago, you would not be able to see these people in this room because they wouldn't have the opportunity to become bloggers, to be, to, to, to be uh, connected the way that we are connected now, thanks to technology and thanks to the fact that many Latinos uh, here, just like you, decided that if no one's going to hire me, I'm going to do this on my own. If no one's going to publish me, then I'm going to publish myself. Thank God that we now have, have that, that possibility. But I think it's now our responsibility, your responsibility, my responsibility, the responsibility of everyone here to help the young Latinos, to help the, the, the future of our country. You know, it's, it's amazing. By the year 2050, we'll be, what, 30% of, of the population here. What responsibility do you think we all have in, in creating this new generation, in helping this new generation? And, you know, I, I did have that question for you because, as I mentioned before, uh, Maria is chair of the let, um, ¿cómo es? Sor Juan Inés, Sor Juan Inés de la Cruz uh, um, at DePaul University. You really wanted that position. And in that position, you know that you can help form the hearts and minds of Latinos. Why is it so important that you do that? So here's the thing, Maria Elena. Um, my students, who I love and adore from DePaul University, we go deep. We teach in a circle. We're about creating a very safe space because I really believe that Latinos, we need safe spaces. And I think in many ways, you know, for, for all kinds of reasons, Univision is also seen as part of that safe space, just because I love to give my sister props. But, but the point is, is that when I hear my students saying things like, I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm American. I'm not sure if I want to call myself American. I'm not sure if I'm Latino enough. I'm not sure if I'm Latina enough. I'm totally confused. <clears throat> and it's just like, what? I flip that and say, you know what Latinos are now? We're ambicultural. So you don't have to continue to put us into little boxes. We are so complex. Que preparense. So for me. It looks like they need to be Hispanicized, right? <laughs> so for me to be in touch, <clears throat> to be in touch with young people who are, who need that reaffirmation that no, you guys, you are the future of this country. You are the future of this country and you need to walk in the world in that way. So I learn from them. I get very inspired. También me preocupan. But you know, we're creating this safe space where we can push each other. Because we need to. Exactly. And as we know, um, we're a very young community. 27 is a median age. And you know, half of all Latinos are under 18. So what happens when, um, when you have this generation of Latinos who have this identity crisis, who don't know if they're Latino? How do you instill in them the pride of their cultural heritage? You know what, I think, like, you know, how do you do it with your children? Right, exactly. And how do we do it as communicators with other children? So it's hard. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if there's one way, Maria Elena. I think that actually if we were to talk to all of the parents in the room, I think that their greatest concern would be how do we make sure that the next generation feels completely proud and orgullosa and orgullosos? Yes. Um, and at the same time, not not wanting to put them in a box. I mean, I think a really good example of like, um, you know, for my kids was the movie Scott, Spy Kids, um, which was just like finally going and seeing themselves. And it wasn't about being a Latino specifically, but it was, I mean, that scene where, oh, by the way, <clears throat> here's one thing I did with my kids. I grew up hating my name. My name is Maria de Lourdes Hinojosa Ojeda. I was like, ugh. <clears throat> But <clears throat> Herman and I did name, hold on, I gotta get this right. <laughs> Maria de Lourdes, aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Hinojosa Ojeda. So this is my son's name. Raul Ariel Jesús de Todos los Santos Pérez Hinojosa. Ah, uh, that. <laughs> and my he daughter still talks is, to you? <laughs> and my daughter is Maria Churema Guadalupe de los Indios Pérez Hinojosa. 
It was a. It was something that I think we did actually because we knew that they would never be able to get it get away from them. The fact that yeah, man, you are Latino 100%. <laughs> They are the new Latinos. They are creating something very new and unique. And, um, but it is, um, it is a constant struggle. I'm very blessed. I just got back from Mexico, where my mom and dad spend the coldest months of Chicago in Mexico. So it's like, it's like the, the drug that my daughter needed, you know, to just like, this is where I come from. I wasn't born here, but this is part of who I am. And I see myself as incredibly blessed to still have the relationship with back home, but I think that that's something that we should think about doing with our kids as part of keeping it alive. They need to realize they're, they're more than just the United States of America. They're actually part of a continent, the America. You know, I love everything that you do, everything that you write, everything that you, that, that, you know, your radio programs and, and your TV shows, but when I saw the name Futuro Media Group, I thought, wow, that is so amazing because El futuro, los hispanos somos el futuro de este país. So it's a perfect name for this organization uh, and, for, and for, for your company. I know that you've had a lot of babies. Um, two of them you gave birth to. And then there's others that, that you have worked. And you know, luckily, as a woman, you have the God-given ability to multitask. Um, so tell us a little bit about your newest baby, which is Futuro Group, and what is it that you're doing in, with Futuro Group? And uh, not only the focus, but what is your goal, your final goal? So I think the goal was actually to become, um, to run my own company, um, to become a boss, to, um, to not just say, okay, I don't really want to work for somebody else. I want to try and do this on my own. Um, and so we created, we took over the production of Latino USA. Um, if you haven't heard the show, and we're working very hard to get it carried here in Miami, because it's kind of ridiculous that Latino USA is not carried in Miami. So you can write to WLRN and let, let them know what you think about that. But we have people listening across the country. So this show just expanded to an hour-long show. It's got this great dynamic. It's getting picked up. We're getting listeners around the world and in the country. And then we decided to launch a television series dedicated to reporting about the new mainstream. So not just about Latinos, but actually the new mainstream that Guy Garcia was talking about. Who is the new mainstream? And the new mainstream is basically these ambicultural Latinos, you know, who can be anyone, along with African-American, Native American, um, Asian, Pacific Islander, LGBTQ, for white America, for lack of a better term, um, because you know white America will soon be the minority, and do we really want to be calling them the minority? So there's other terms that people are using. It's the creative class, you know. So all of that is the new mainstream, but we don't really have any kind of journalism that's reporting about this new mainstream, even though. Um, it's basically the growing market in the United States of America. It's, it's basically the electorate that got the president um, elected twice. So it's not just an idea. And we wanted to report about that on television. So on PBS, starting this fall, we'll have America by the Numbers with Maria Hinojosa. And I think that the, um, the other thing that Futuro does is we, we go into communities, so we do screenings, we communicate with people. Like Maria Elena, it's never about like, oh, look, they're a success, they're on television. Oh, how fabulous, I wish I could touch that. No, it's about we're right here in your community. We are you, you are us, and we're right here with you. Um, we train journalists, those of you who are journalists, um, we have an internship program. You have to have a place to live in New York. Um, and we're based in Harlem because we want it to be based in a community to say national media that reaches people all around the world visually and, um, on, and audially can be produced in a community. Um, our digital impact is growing 300%. Um, so it was all about that, but it was about really understanding that I wanted to take control editorially and it's fun. It's scary, Maria Elena. It's scary, but it's tremendous. But fun. people are listening. And you have outlets that are airing your shows uh, on radio, uh, in television, newspapers that are publishing your columns, um, you know, companies that, that are publishing your books. So there's people out there that, that want to hear you. And you know, to me, uh, there's an issue that is very important. And no matter what posts you're saying, what people say, the immigration issue is a very important issue for our community. And since you're here, there's no way that you can leave without giving me your input on, on this issue. Uh, I want to know if you are on the side of the it's over and there's nothing that we can do to salvage immigration reform, or if you're on the side of uh, being an optimist and thinking that it, it can still be salvaged. Um, 
Look, I, I'm actually going to co quote Koki Roberts um, from ABC News and, um, and NPR. Um, I'm very lucky that Koki's a friend and she happened to run into with, to me in the airport and she offered to drive me. Can you believe it? And when we were in the car, I said to her, Koki, what does it mean to you the fact that immigration reform has been stuck and unable to pass? And she was like, well, it's a very simple political narrative. Very simple. We like you. We don't like you. We don't like you. We don't like you enough. This, I think, is very damaging because while people think that it's only about immigrants um, and only about Latinos, we know that what this is really doing is having a broad impact in our United States of America. It's not just about the immigrants que lo están viviendo en carne propia. I think that I don't know if anything is possible in this short term. What that may mean, and it is a pox on all politicians, from the president on down, on, all, on both houses, that we may not have comprehensive immigration reform until 2017, when my son, who is not yet in college, will be graduating from college. What this says about who we are is very problematic. The optimist in me, Maria Elena, because I'm also, as you know, I was not born in this country. I became an American citizen. I actually received an award from Janet Napolitano as an American by choice, outstanding American by choice. Great. Um, I don't, I don't, I mean, really the awards, but I, I'm trying to tell you that because of that, my relationship with democracy and our engagement is very deep and very profound and I take it very seriously, like no joke. So I call myself a democracy junkie. And democracy to me is not just going to the voting booth, though that is a powerful and must form of democracy. Democracy is how I learned it also, Maria Elena, as a kid, when I knew no one in my family could vote, and yet we were going to demonstrations, we went to see Cesar Chavez, Martin Luther King, we were part of that conversation. That is what democracy looks like. And you know what, you guys? Democracy at that level, whether it's um, civil disobedience or undocumented immigrants being elected to school boards or Latinas running for office or getting the first Latina senator um, and presidential candidate, all of that is at the core of our democracy. And Latinos are leading that conversation. So while this is fabulous and having marketing and selling and buying, guys, we need everybody engaged in our democracy and how Latinos think and talk about this, how each and every one of you think and talk about this is gonna have a core impact on the future of our country. So if immigration reform doesn't happen, yeah, a pox on everyone, but also on us. Our engagement needs to be deeper, our storytelling about who these people are to counteract what CNN did with the years and years and years of CNN and Lou Dobbs and, Dobbs and Broken Borders. We have a lot of work to do. That image was created and we know that is not us. So that was a really long answer. You okay, the secret's out. We're no friends of Lou Dobbs, Maria and I. <laughs> no, no, no. no, Neither no, one of us. No, I, I had to quit um, Ma -ma CNN because I thought I would end up kicking him one day. <laughs> oh, you never know, huh? In the hallway, he, he flipped. I mean, he fell down. No. Somebody tripped him. No. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah. There was some short little Mexican there that was walking by. <laughs> Maybe that was her. Uh, but anyway, he's out of there. And, um, you know, I want to add to what you said, because uh, I think it's important to recognize now that you mentioned that you don't have to be an American citizen to be part of this democracy. I want to recognize the hard work of the dreamers in this country, because it, if it wasn't for the work of the dreamers, for their efforts, for, you know, their courage uh, to march all the way up to D.C., we would never have gotten as far as we have gotten now. So whatever understanding there is in D.C. this morning, I mean, uh, today, uh, in, in the House, in the Senate, in both parties, in the, in the White House, it really is in, in great credit to, to the dreamers. So we and being, really and being pro dreamer, you guys, being pro dreamer is really being pro American. It's really being pro American, as far as I'm concerned. In, one more thing about the immigration issue and, and, and playing the blame game. As you know, Janet um, Murguia uh, from NCLR recently called uh, President Obama deporter in, in chief. Uh, while, you know, most people agree 
that unfortunately two million plus deportations will be part of his very unfortunate legacy. There are others who believe that attacking the president on that particular issue is going to be a major setback or a bigger setback in reaching immigration reform. Do you think that's true? I know that this is complicated, but the truth is is that... It um, is complicated. It's very but complicated. Do you want to ask questions or what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's just that I, I need, as a journalist, I need people to understand when I cover the story, I do cover the story from all angles. But at the same time, the truth is, is that this president has overseen the highest numbers of deportations ever in history. And the truth is, is that this president was the one who said, um, I will fix this. I understand what the issue is and I will fix it. And the truth is, is that there is an electorate that feels like promises have been broken. So um, all of those things are, are facts. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm fascinated by the political conversation among activists because I think, again, what it shows is a, a sophistication of the conversation that people are having, that Americans are having, with or without papers, about democracy. So I'm fascinated at the level that, that people are talking about this. What is the political ramification of attacking the president versus, you know, what if the dreamers take over with this? That's, we're in the midst of it, you guys. This is like what was happening in the 1950s around civil rights, when young people were taking over you know, um, restaurant counters um, and sitting in, and no one was covering it in the news media. We're living it today, um, and some people are covering it in the news media, but dreamers, they're, they're us. They're, they're absolutely us. So. It's not my role to say, I just want more engagement across the board. And I think we have to hold toditos, toditos, toditos accountable. That was pretty good, toditos accountable. Toditos accountable, <laughs> that sounds very good. Um, Maria, we're coming to, to a close and we're running out of time. I have so many questions to ask you, but I think we, 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 need, we need to move on. But um, no quiero que te vayas sin antes uh, hablarnos un poco de, de la huella que que quieres dejar en, en esta sociedad. We all know that journalism is it's a tough career. So a lot of people think it's a glamour business, and the glamour is from, you know, from the screen out. Not from the, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of dedication. Uh, there are journalists and then there are journalists. There are those who just inform, and there are those who go above and beyond uh, informing. You're one of those people that goes above Gracias. and beyond. Gracias. Thank you. Maria, I know that, that you do it because you're passionate about it, because you want to make a difference in people's lives, and because you don't want to just exist, you want to live, you want to leave a mark. What is the mark that you want to leave? As a journalist, as a Latina. You know what, I grew up always feeling less than because of the invisibility. So I think the mark that I want to make is to say, you guys, own your power, own your visibility. Uh, believe in yourselves, um, believe in your narrative, believe in your American story, um, quiet that voice. You know, you know who taught me something pretty amazing? Rita Moreno, who um, came to our offices, our studios in Harlem. Um, I mean, you know, Rita Moreno, who's done it all. She's one of the you know, 12 people in the world that is an EGOT, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. And hasta Rita Moreno, you know, said that she has a little voice inside, que le dice, ay, Rita, tú que te crees? You're not, come on, you don't deserve that award, you know, and it's a little voice that Rita Moreno has at 82. And she told me that what she does is that she names the little voice and she punishes the little voice, y la encierra en el cuarto, y no puede salir. Oh, that's a good one. And it's a good one. So I think, you know, it's about our moment in history, you guys. We are, we're creating this new America. And so we have to feel powerful. And that doesn't mean, I think, that the whole issue around also leadership in Latinos is that tampoco nos, no, nos necesariamente a, a todos nos gusta como que, yeah, you know, like, that's not Maria Elena, that's not me. It's, it's about humility and service, right? So it's about being leaders, but at the same time being humble. Um, and so the people who inspire me are, are la gente que, que hace su trabajo, que, que, que cumplen y que nadie los ve. Y contar esas historias, ¿no? Con mucho honor. And to not feel powerless. 
to feel powerful because it's our moment. It's really our moment. Maria Elena, and you, I know you don't want me to throw it back at you, but you are a part of that inspiration. You absolutely are. People get your authenticity. People get your humanity. Thank you, Maria. Um, and, and I think that's what people want, right? We want that authenticity. We want that connection. We want that truth. Um, and then we will be very loyal. But our time is now, gente. I'm serious. Our time is now. And so the legacy is do it. Sin miedo. Sin miedo pa'lante. Sin miedo. Sin miedo pa'lante. Maria, you are a Latino Vader. Thank you for what you do. Gracias por forjar el futuro. Maria Elena, they want us to do one. Again? Again? Okay. 